Good afternoon, everybody. It's AUT62. Welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit different today. I'm doing my first Star Wars The Black Series 6 inch action figure review. Uh, I've been collecting these for about three or four years now, and I use them on the shelf to complement the Bandai model kits. I've been a huge fan of the Black Series and a huge fan which I'm sure most of you are, of the Clone Wars. And so finally getting to have a battle droid that's available in this line is actually special. Now this came out a long time ago, but I finally got my hands on one. The Bandai kit is a little bit expensive because it comes with a stop. And then other than Bandai, for a long time, the only way to get a B1 battle droid in 112 scale or six inch is to do SHS Figure Arts, which is also a Bandai company. And they're fairly expensive so it's just really nice to see hasbro putting one out there just a little preliminary stuff before i open this guy up standard black series packaging number 83 you can see on the side battle droid and then just the bio a little bit closer so you can pause or read it or i'll just read it now uh, rather than use flesh and blood warriors the separatists prefer mindlessly loyal soldiers that are easily controlled battle droids are dim-witted no match for clone troopers or jedi but they weren't designed to be smart, they were designed to overwhelm Republic civilians through sheer numbers, something they do very effectively. Now that's a little bit mean <laughs> to the battle droids. They were first seen in the Phantom Menace, and this droid is modeled after those, and I'll get into what I mean by that since all B1 battle droids kind of look the same and basically are, but I've seen a couple of reviews on this where people don't know too 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 much about the b1 unit or how it was used by the separatists over the trade federation after the phantom menace and all that other stuff so once i get them open i will give you guys a brief history of the battle droid and we'll go over articulation and just see how he stacks up with other figures that i have including the bandai 112 general grievous figure all right here's the b1 battle droid out of the packaging now i'm trying to do some stuff with the lighting here so let me see if i can fix this get a little bit closer the camera i'm using right now can't capture the whole six inches of figure in the shot so he's a little bit far away uh that brings me to my first point about this figure he is actually one of the tallest black series figures i have he stands just over six inches he's a lot taller than say the other people and when i say people i mean because obviously he's a droid and most of the time we just get character figures for reference, here he is next to the second sister Inquisitor, and I will be doing a review on her. And then here he is again next to General Beers. He stands a whole head taller than both figures, and he just has a really great profile. Obviously, this is representative of the B1 battle droids we see in the Phantom Menace. Now, we do see the B1 battle droids throughout the Clone Wars in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith as well. However, the markings on this, well, the tan coloring, he does have some interesting paint apps here. As you can see, silver and brown to dirty him up, make him look like he went through a battle. But this color scheme is the standard for not only the Separatist, but also the Trade Federation, which is where these battle droids come from. And it is based off of the Phantom Menace, the first time we see them. And just like I promised, I'm going to give you a quick little history of the B1 unit right now using his accessories to make the point obviously you can see in his hands which is really great that he can actually point the blaster forward just like the etchy sets figure arts b1 battle droid he can be put into a position where you can fire for anybody who collects the three and three quarter scale the very small figures they can't do that none of the battle droids have been able to do that so that's special and then he comes with one other accessory oh i didn't even say this one that's the E5 blaster, of course, it's standard for all B1 units. It's like the Stormtroopers E11. It wouldn't be a battle for that one. But the next accessory we get is this little command antenna. And so what you would do to put this in is you would pull off his backpack and take this off and just plug it in right behind his left shoulder. Now this is the interesting accessory because out of all the videos I watched, not a lot of people know why they gave us this in the figure but the reason for that is because it's supposed to recreate an OOM unit. Ah oh, geez he's not gonna stand up. 
this is one of my biggest gripes with this figure is that obviously has such a thin profile. He is really hard to stand up on his own. Anyway, the OOM unit was the predecessor to the B1 battle droid. They were used by the Trade Federation before the attack on Naboo. They would be the specialist droids. So whereas the B1 battle droid, like it said on the package, appears mindless, they all connect to a central computer, even though that's changed by the Separatist later in the Clone Wars, the OOMs were not centrally computed. They could think on their own. They were pre-programmed to hold special positions. So if you play the Battlefront 2 games, the OOM units are your pilots, they are your ship gunners, they're your commander droids, or the specialist sniper class droids and security droids. None of those have been pre-created as an action figure as of yet, except by Sideshow, which does one six scale or 12 inch tall figures. However, those two antenna units are from an OOM commander droid. And the way you would do that, if you wanted to make yours a commander droid, so all you have to do is paint a little, the top part of his head yellow, and then give him a yellow circle, and you have an OOM commander droid. And it's just a really cool thing. It's a neat little callback, not only, like I said, to the Clone Wars, but to the Phantom Menace as the first droids you see in Phantom Menace are not the B1s. You see those at the very end of the movie. All the droids you see before the end on the Trade Federation ship are the Trade Federation OOMs. Both droids are made by Bactoid Arm Workshop, which the Trade Federation used to build all of their droid weapons. But you can faithfully recreate one of the commander units using this Black Series figure. There's a lot, a lot of detail you probably didn't need to know or want to know, but you have it and you can use it. Now, besides being really hard to stand, the articulation on this figure is actually quite impressive. So I'll start with the arms. Not only does he have the blaster holding hand here, he can't hold the blaster with his left hand. That's okay. No battle droids did that. But he does have a hinge joint in his shoulder. He can go up almost 90. It rotates all the way around on both shoulders. The arms have swivel pegs up here and down here so you can get more dynamic poses. Right there, if it'll swivel, there we go. Does have just a single joint elbow. And then of course, because it's the Black Series, the trigger hand moves up and down 90 degrees both directions. Same thing on this hand, only sideways, up and down, 90 degrees. He doesn't have actually any movement really in the torso to turn or not. These two pieces here actually peg straight into his body, so that's why it doesn't really move, but it does make the figure sturdy. And as you can see, you can get a little bit of an ab crunch back and forward. He has two ball joints for his thighs that can come out maybe 20 degrees to give you a wider hip stance to stand him up and then he does have only single jointed knees but they go all the way back and the reason for that and for this is because you can store him in the standby mode and I'll show you that really quick after I get done with the articulation his feet on a normal hinge go back all the way and they come up all the way they do swivel slightly about 45 degrees on each side that's pretty much it for major articulation. This figure is very flimsy. All the joints are very tight, so I would be extremely careful. Now his head is on a ball joint, but the reason I'm not going to show you and the reason I preface it with that is that it is so tight, and as you can see as I turn it, it wants to twist the pylon that is his neck, and you don't really want to snap that piece. And then one other piece of articulation I forgot about was his antenna on his head move up and down, as well as the antennas for his backpack. You can move them in and out just like that now for standby mode this whole neck unit i can sort of show you is on a really thin peg move the head out of the way a really thin peg here so you're going to pull this up like that and you can see the peg and then this is on a separate hinge and if you're really careful and it's so nerve-wracking you can pull the head all the way forward put the peg back in put the head down like that take the blaster out of his hand and there's a plug right here that corresponds to a plug on the blaster itself. Push it in like that. Then you move the legs all the way up and back down. 
move the hands forward, rotate the arms, so that way the hands can sort of grip his legs. And then right there, I can get it on camera but without it falling over. Sort of. There you go. That's standby mode. And so when you first see them in the Phantom Menace or anytime you see the B1 unit not being used, it would be closed up in this mode. And the reason this was a cool feature that the Black Series added is because of course the SHS figure arts battle droids can all be stored in standby mode. And so it's nice that if you don't want to pay almost $60 or the price of three Black Series figures for one B1 battle droid, you can get this one. And another thing I like about this one over the SHS figure arts is its size, which I've already showed you compared to other Black Series units. But let me show you it next to the Bandai one called Del Revis, which is an impressively tall figure. He stands at about seven and a half inches tall, almost eight inches tall. If you put it next to the B1 unit, it comes up to just above his, oops, not facing the camera. <laughs> it comes up to just about his shoulder blades. And that's exactly how tall you want a B1 unit to look next to the general. And the reason I say that is that while SHS Figure Arts is a really great figure, if you happen to have that B1 unit, it is very nice. They stand at about five inches or as tall as General Beers. So they don't really have the presence on the shelf to be mixed in with the Bandai model kids or even the Black Series figures. But that's not a problem now that we have our very own Black Series B1 battle droid and he is the right height. So not a lot of gripes, the paint apps, I'm not a fan of. I wanted a clean looking B1 unit, but that's not really a problem. The only problem I've had with this kit, again, is very stiff joints, very hard to stand up on a shelf. But because of all the articulation he has, he does make some pretty dynamic poses and all around a really excellent figure and a really faithful representation of the B1 unit. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more. Like I said, I will be doing a review of the second Sister Inquisitor from Jedi Fallen Order right after this, and I will also be uploading a video on the Sith Trooper from the Black Series. So as always, I will see you next time, and thank you so much for watching.